Virgil van Dijk is the best defender in the world at the moment. I mean, you can't really argue this because Virgil van Dijk, as a defender, managed to finish second in the Ballon d'Or race, only behind Leo Messi, and that deserves a lot of respect. Even though Premier League football is on a hiatus right now, over on Twitter, the debates between Liverpool and Man United fans continue to go on and on. One particular topic of discussion is between Liverpool's defence with Van Dijk and Man United's defence with Rio Ferdinand and Nemanja Vidic. Both defences were Champions League winners, Liverpool in 2019, Man United in 2008. So I thought for today's video, let's try and compare Virgil van Dijk's Liverpool to Rio Ferdinand's Manchester United of old. We're going to be running today's experiment in a bit of a different manner. First of all, we're going to be putting the two teams in a career mode simulation to just find out which team fares better in the Premier League, which teams concedes the least amount of goals. I mean, we are comparing defenders, so no better way to check this out. And then we're going to do the classic gameplay portion of the video where we're going to be putting Van Dijk's Liverpool up against Ferdinand's United in a computer versus computer match to find out which team comes out on top. So if you guys are excited for the return of these experiment videos, drop a like in the video, subscribe if you're new around here, let me know what experiments we should do next on the channel, and let's get this one underway. First up, let's take a look at Virgil van Dijk's Liverpool team. Now, this team has achieved a lot recently, winning, of course, the Champions League back in 2019, and they're basically going to win the Premier League this season as well. This backline is genuinely insane, starting off with Alisson, who is one of the best keepers in the world. Van Dijk, of course, the best defender in the world. Along with him, he's got Robertson and Trent, who are basically the best fullback pairing in the world as well. So, Van Dijk does have the luxury of playing alongside some quality footballers. Matip is decent as well. Fabinho, Wijnaldum and Henderson is a good midfield. Jordan Henderson, I think, is going to win the Player of the Year in the Premier League, which is certainly interesting to see. Moving up to the attack, we've got Fermino, Mane and Salah, who are just an unbelievable front three. Fermino, of course, linking the two up. So, yeah, Van Dijk's Liverpool is class. Liverpool do have the luxury of having a decent bench as well, with the likes of Shaqiri, Origi, Keita, Milner, Oxlade-Chamberlain, Joe Gomez. Gomez, not Adrian though, he's pretty average. So this is Virgil van Dijk's Liverpool, let's now take a look at Rio Ferdinand's Manchester United. And here we have Rio Ferdinand's Manchester United. Now because I'm on the PC version of the game, I can put prime icons onto kickoff, which has really helped make this video. But apart from that, there were a few players that aren't on FIFA 20, like Patrice Evra, Gary Neville, Vidic and all, I had to create them from scratch. I've tried to make them look as realistic as possible and I've tried to give them as realistic stats as possible as well. Looking at that back line, oh my god, does this look insane. Van der Sar in goal, Rio Ferdinand as well, Nemanja Vidic along with him, Gary Neville, Patrice Evra, this back line is just outrageous. One major difference that I've noticed is that Van Dijk is the superstar of that Liverpool team, whereas Ferdinand in a way was just, just another player because of the sheer quality this team had. I mean, look at the midfield, Scholes, Carrick, and then of course Cristiano Ronaldo playing down the right side, Ryan Giggs as well, and up top having Carlos Tevez and Wayne Rooney. It's just crazy. On the bench, I've included a few players that have played along with Rio Ferdinand, the likes of Welbeck, Nani, Park Ji Song, Fabio, Rafael, Pique, and Ben Foster. Talking about Park Ji Song, for some reason EA have randomly given him this face which does not make any sense whatsoever, but in-game he does look realistic, so there's that. Now that we've taken a look at the two teams, let's put them in a career mode simulation and find out which team fares better in the Premier League, which team concedes the least amount of goals. It would be unfair to have the Champions League turned on for today's experiment because Liverpool have a bigger squad, hence they would probably perform better, so to level the playing field, no Champions League. Also, no transfer window as well because we don't really want any signings to happen. Simulating now until the end of the season, let's Let's now find out which team has fared better in the Premier League. Okay, so this is definitely interesting. Both teams have managed to secure top two spots in the Premier League. City finishing third on 97 points. Imagine the amount of points Liverpool and United have accumulated. It's going to be crazy. So it's going to be Liverpool in second place and Manchester United in first. So the back line of Ferdinand and Nemanja Vidic have come through as they finish the season on 105 points, which is 13 goals conceded, whereas Liverpool have conceded 22 goals with 101 points. Both ridiculous stats, but well, according to FIFA, on career mode at least, Manchester United's defence from back in 2008 was better. Also having Cristiano Ronaldo, Ryan Giggs and Wayne Rooney certainly helps United because Cristiano scored 34 in 38 games, Ryan Giggs scored 23, Wayne Rooney came up with 17 as well. Mo Salah did contribute though with 28 goals and Mane coming in with 23. Look at the amount of clean sheets Van der Sar got, 25 in 38 games, that is outrageous. That's the career mode simulation.
finishing part of the video done, Manchester United come out on top. Let's now get into the gameplay. Here we go, Liverpool up against Manchester United in today's experiment. It's this man, Virgil van Dijk's defence up against Rio Ferdinand's Manchester United. And also, to keep it realistic, I've given Man United their old kits from back in 2008, the AIG kits, to, you know, keep the experiment as realistic as possible. Let's get the game underway. With how good these two defences are, I genuinely wouldn't surprise if this game ended in a nil-nil draw. Here goes Roberto Firmino for Liverpool. Fabinho back to Firmino. The two Brazilians linking up. Ferdinand with the interception and no nonsense defending there from Nemanja Vidic. Michael Carrick scooping this one for Gary Neville. It's a beautiful pass and now Neville heads this one down for Ronaldo. He's up against Virgil van Dijk who cleans things up really well and clears the ball away. As I said, these two defences are unbelievable. A nil-nil scoreline wouldn't surprise me. Trent Alexander-Arnold, we know he can whip in a good ball, but Rio Ferdinand is having none of it. Clears it away easily. Ryan Giggs controls the ball easily there. The Welshman brings it down, finds Paul Scholes. Scholes looks for Carlos Tevez, could be the first opportunity. Tevez trying to get in behind. Van Dijk has recovered really well. Tevez shoots, but off target. At least a chance here for Manchester United. Virgil van Dijk recovered so well easily there. Haven't seen much from Liverpool's wingers in this game. This could be the chance though. Oh my god, Sadio Mane just got taken down there by Gary Neville. That was a brutal challenge from him. Wijnaldum gets past one. Ginny Wijnaldum does well. Looks for Roberto Firmino. Back to Sadio Mane. This could be the chance Liverpool have been waiting for. Still Firmino puts a brilliant ball into Mo Salah. That is an outrageous goal, but it's offside. What a pass though from Firmino to Salah. I want to take a look at the replay to see just how offside Salah was. Because if he was offside, that was a brilliant line held by Patrice Evra, Ferdinand and all. Viric almost kept Mo Salah onside. Ooh, that was a close one. Cristiano Ronaldo down the right flank, stopping the play, looking to get past Van Dijk. Ronaldo almost nutmegs Van Dijk, who completely takes him out there. Ronaldo probably got injured there. Nope, he's fine. Now it's United on the attack with Michael Carrick looking for passing options. Probably going to find Ronaldo there. Still Michael Carrick looks back inside for Carlos Tevez, controls it well, but Fabinho with the crucial challenge. Ryan Giggs looks inside for Ronaldo with a powerful header. Alisson has somehow stopped that. Out of nowhere, the cross was whipped in. And Cristiano Ronaldo getting ahead of Andy Robertson probably should have scored that. What a save from Alisson. This is what happens when you've got a quality keeper. He saves you in situations like this. One chance before the halftime whistle. It's Wayne Rooney on the ball. Rooney looks for Carlos Tevez as he tries and breaks through. Still Carlos Tevez, the dribbling is on point, looks for Wayne Rooney, a chance before the halftime whistle, Rooney brings it inside, tries the cut back, but Alisson read that, Wayne really should have done better there. Halftime in this one, and to be fair, the game has gone exactly how we expected it to go. Both defences looking really solid, let's see what the second half has to offer. Ronaldo down the right flank, challenging Sadio Mane, Robertson seems to be out of position, Ronaldo looks for an early cross to Carlos Tevez, it's a good ball, but Tevez's header was nowhere near threatening Alisson. Ryan Giggs out wide, controls it obviously really well, still Ryan Giggs, looks to find Paul Scholes, does so successfully, Paul Scholes looks inside, Virgil van Dijk, oh Rooney gets a gifted ball there, Virgil van Dijk has made a big error, you don't expect that to happen, Wayne Rooney capitalises, donning the number 10 in the retro Man United kit, oh it looks fantastic to see it that way, as Rooney scores the first goal in this experiment, and Manchester United, led by Rio Ferdinand, Nemanja Vidic and all, have taken the lead. Have a look at the replay, a big mistake from Virgil van Dijk and Jordan Henderson for that matter. They struggled to get the ball away, luckily it bounced for Wayne Rooney perfectly and he put that one in the back of the net as Manchester United have taken the lead in this one. Sadio Mane down the wings, looking really good, looks inside for Fabinho, big chance for Liverpool there, huge save from van der Sar. Not allowing Liverpool to get back in the game at all. Brilliant goalkeeping. Liverpool now applying a lot more pressure. Oxlade Chamberlain with some good dribbling tries to find a pass, but Nemanja Vidic read that so well and Van der Sar collects it easily. Or could be a chance here for Roberto Firmino. It was a brilliant ball. Now Mo Salah, but instead of shooting, he tried to pass it to Jordan Henderson. That was the mistake there. Salah should have just taken the shot. An easy interception there for Paul Scholes. Mane goes inside for Naby Keita. This could be the chance Liverpool have been waiting for. Mane shoots. That was one hell of an attempt, but Van der Sar read that one again and makes another outstanding save. Trent takes the corner shot to Oxlade-Chamberlain. Still Ox plays this one back in. Virgil van Dijk trying to make amends for his mistake, but couldn't direct that one towards goal. Wayne Rooney looks for Danny Welbeck and he might actually get through here. Welbeck takes a good touch, gets past Joel Matip. Danny Welbeck almost scoring against Alisson. Virgil van Dijk nowhere to be found. Where was he in this attack? Matip letting van Dijk and Co down. 
and well, Welbeck almost scored. And that is full time. Manchester United with a defensive masterclass with Rio Ferdinand and Nemanja Vidic at the back. They get the job done and they've come out on top in this FIFA experiment. United won the career mode part of the video and they also won the gameplay part. It was the Virgil van Dijk mistake that cost Liverpool the game. So at least according to FIFA, Ferdinand's Man United is better than Virgil van Dijk's Liverpool. So Rio Ferdinand had a 7.2 match rating in this game and Nemanja Vidic had a 7.2 match rating as well. Virgil van Dijk not far off even though he made the mistake for the goal. He still finished with a 6.8 match rating. But that's that for today's FIFA 20 experiment video. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys did, drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here and well, I'll catch you all next time.